parts are this uh, ZTEC drip thing. Um, core plugs, maybe, um, because the leak appears to be coming from quite high up on the engine block. I'm actually thinking it could be the head gasket, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, quite a big job, I think, coming up. This is the scene of the crime. So here we have a standard 2-litre blacktop uh, ZTEC. I think this one came out of a Focus. Probably built originally about 2000. And put in here, or late 90s perhaps, put in this. Around that 2012. So yeah. And it's been extremely good over that period. But... Um, we now have that problem. Now in fact, as I mentioned, I did actually change the cam belt on this. And hence you can see the alignment marks. In fact I've already checked it is actually at top dead centre on cylinder number one already. So, or at least it was, I don't know if it's still in it. Oh yeah. Okay, Still, I left it in gear by the look of it. I was looking for these two marks here to line up with each other. And you can see, I think, there's a mark here and a mark there, and a mark here and a mark there. It doesn't look very well lined up, actually, does it, on the cams? Well, they can't lined up with each other. And according, I tell you what. Why don't I do the top dead centre thing? Now it's important to remember that, um, of course, being a four-stroke engine, um, cylinder number one comes up to top dead centre twice on every complete cycle. One on the compression stroke and one on the exhaust stroke. Um, but uh, because I've done half this job before, I'm going to just check whether it's actually top dead centre or not. So I've got the um, spark plug in cylinder number one removed. And um, the easiest way to move the engine round, in this car anyway, is just to put it in gear and rock it backwards and forwards. Now, you should be able to see that went down. It's going up, it's staying roughly the same, and it's now going down again. In fact, it's gone down roughly to the same down position that it was before. So, halfway in between that down position and the other down position should be top dead centre. I'm going to do a slightly more accurate version of that. Okay, so that is a mark that I'm making on the screwdriver. And simultaneously I'll have a mark on the crankshaft. Now I'll rock the engine forward until it goes over top dead centre. Let's check that I know where that mark is. Okay. And it will now go upwards and then it will go downwards. back at the same position that it was. I shall look for my mark. Now you can't see those marks really, I know, but I can. And what that means is that halfway in between those two marks 
is where top dead center is which is therefore there yeah looks good to me feels good to me which is perhaps more important so um, it's worth remembering two things actually the if you're talking about the cam belt itself it's on teeth so there's a limit to how far out it can be before you've got a whole tooth out um, so that is one thing so if you're simply changing the cam belt um, it's impossible to be very slightly out you have to be, I don't know how many teeth there are on this they're about three or four degrees each anyway um, and uh, it'd be difficult to not notice that I think by well, use of a half inch to three eighths and a three eighths to a quarter inch adapter I've got this little eight millimeter socket onto my impact driver um, it's just for speed really well it certainly was fast and now I'll give the uh, cam cover a few wallops with this mallet to see see what happens basically it's starting to move and it's off Hello Jessica. Anyway, um, because it's looking very, very likely indeed that the uh, head's going to have to come off, I'm going to take things such as the thermostat housing and the uh, um, coil pack off the engine. Well, when I say the engine because it's right on the back of the cylinder head. Alright, because it's going to have to come out, I'm going to take off the exhaust manifold I think I shall be able to get round there's a couple of studs sticking out here which ones won't come completely off but it is basically off because I'm about to take the camshafts off I have actually remarked the cam belt with respect to these white marks that I left there before um, as well as that I've got the marks on that side between the cam carrier I suppose and the sprocket likewise over there so uh, belt and braces and as well as that I'm going to make sure it's not in gear so that um, I can't move it accidentally move the engine around by mistake so I'm just releasing the camshaft cam belt rather tensioner And I noticed that um, a hexagonal socket like that was okay, but a typical spanner, which actually has 12 sides, was not okay. So ostensibly the same size, but uh, yeah, tolerancing is different. Obviously the peaks and troughs in there are more pronounced than they are in there. And the tensioner itself has a little, I've just undone this bolt here. Okay, so I've got this star adapter which is labelled E10, which is a 3 8 drive and therefore I'm using an adapter on my half inch bit. Let's see how that goes. Okay. That's pretty well fixed on, I think. Might actually require a big spanner. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Presumably these lift off. Yes, they do. Alrighty. Now, will they just lift off? Or do I need to persuade the cam belt off first? Perhaps I need to take the cam shaft um, belt tensioner off altogether. Okay, that's the tensioner. 
released. So tension that is completely off now. And that should, yes, a lot more. There we go. So, according to my calculations, the camshafts should lift out now. And they're not. So they're all going to hold in there by suction. I suppose these are both the same. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So perhaps it was suction then. All right, so that is the uh, inlet camshaft. So is there a reason why they aren't the same? Oh, ah, yeah, okay. All right, I found my T55 Torx star bit, star bit, and I'm going to undo the cylinder head. Which I think I shall do with this great big long. So this is my T55, which is uh, a nice fit in this opening here, which is bigger than all the other ones. And so therefore I've had to go and buy another T55, which actually works on a 3 8 um, drive, which means I've got an adapter as well to make it come together. Well, that's kind of annoying, but uh, anyway, at least, it, at least it fits now. Hello Jessica. This, um, by the way, is a uh, fabricated plenum, um, which we bought a long time ago now, from uh, Kit, pa Kit Parts Direct, I think. And uh, Obviously it goes on a standard throttle body, not obviously, this is a standard focus throttle body. This is a plenum, so there's trumpets inside it. And it fits under the bonnet and it's excellent, but it does need a micro alternator. Which is uh, just in there and I'm going to need to take it off I think. Uh, yeah. Did I miss one? That would certainly explain why I can't get it undone. Okay, not missed entirely. Yeah, that would certainly explain why I couldn't get the head off. bolts appear to be exactly the same which is good plus I think you're supposed to use new ones right having taken all the cylinder head bolts off it's now loose I'll pull the exhaust to one side. Uh, piece of cardboard to put it on. Uh, airflow sensor. And down here is my water leak. 
So I will just mop up as a force when you take the ga head gasket off. Water will find its way into the cylinders, especially if you didn't drain the system down. Well, there's the head gasket itself. <coughs> Hello, Jessica. Well, it's not showing anything dramatic. So what does it tell me about the leak here? So this is my wetness. It was wet before. In fact, it's wet now as well. So it could have been leaking through here. You see all the residue from the antifreeze. I'll have to turn the head over and have a look at it. So, here's the cylinder head. Ugh. And this is the end that it was leaking from. And again, you can see antifreeze residue. I'm going to need to take that um, idler off, aren't I? Is there anything under that? 15. That's the idler. Oh bloody hell. There is a core plug. Which is what I thought right at the beginning. But I couldn't see it and I couldn't find anything to tell me. There's a great big fat core plug in the cylinder head. It's got to be that, isn't it? There it is. A great big fat core plug. It's not uh, totally clear. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure whether the core plug was leaking or not until that very moment. And I think you can see there's definitely a defect right there. That black mark. I'm going to poke it actually with a screwdriver. Yeah, there it is. And yep, there's a hole just there. So any doubt that previously existed is definitely gone now. In fact, it feels a bit dodgy in this corner as well. Let me adjust. Let me adjust you. See if I can adjust you with a bit of lean. Not too much. Don't want you falling over. <coughs> Right, that should do it. Yep. Can you see all around there? In fact, it's virtually in two pieces at that point. So, having established that the core plug um, is uh, no good, I need to remove it. So, that's the best I can view I can arrange for you at this moment. What I'm going to do is use a strong screwdriver with metal that goes all the way through the handle and a large hammer. And I'm going to punch it out. Let's see if this works. I hope so. I'm going to go with the sharpest corner first. Oh, that's going a lot more easily than I expected, actually. Yeah, that's um, completely parted along where it was obviously rusted. Let's go on this edge as well. Yeah, 
Now the only problem I'm having is it's going inside the cylinder head casting. Okay, so I'm going to carry on the way I was doing it. Right, you probably can't see from there as it's bending way towards you, but I'm going to put my magnet in there in case it... Well, magnet stroke gripper, in case it wants to fall down somewhere inaccessible. And that is the remains of the main disc. Now I can see there's some loose bits of rust in there. Yep, big chunk of rusted core plug. It's funny how um, rust um, remains magnetic. Okay, so that's good. Now the question is, can I get the edge of the disc out without damaging the alloy casting. So I'm now going to focus on the edge. I think something moved. Yes, it's going in. That's good. Yep. Looks like it's... There it is. And that is the outer ring from the core plug. So what we are left with is that's the disc, which I've obviously folded in half by hammering it, the outer, and a pile of rust. So any doubts I might have had that this was in fact leaking, yeah, well they're gone now. After a bit of a gap, the uh, core plugs that I ordered have turned up. Now, it turns out that um, there are quite a few core plugs in a ZTEC engine, and uh, this is why it took such a long time to get the right one, a very large one, uh, a number of smaller ones, and uh, this one. Now, did you notice the difference in size between this one and this one? Well, it's um, it's not a lot, probably two millimetres diameter difference, but it's enough to mean that this one is way too small for the uh, cylinder head. So this is one for the block and well I won't let go of it because it will fall into the, into the cylinder heads. What did I say? And indeed it did fall into the cylinder head. That was lucky. Right, so don't do what I do. Do as I say. Now the, um, the core plug supplier did suggest using this Durco HT by temperature I suppose. Um, sealant. So that's what I'm going to use. I shall put some around the hole. Not too much, I think. You know, to be fair, it just seemed kind of thicker than ordinary silicone rubber does. Now I'm going to smear some of this. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same as ordinary. I'm going to use this use this socket and a long handle to make sure it goes in straight and I'm going to bang it in until it's flush here we go yep 
Yeah. Okay. So we'll call that done then. I could mention that I, I did clean out the um, the hole in, in the cylinder head um, with a rotary brush on my drill before doing any of that. Um, so now we're in a position of putting the cylinder head back on. So here are my brand new cylinder head bolts because um, I understand that you can't reuse the old ones. So uh, they're just waiting to be used. Of course I've cleaned up with a scraper and so on the uh, mating surfaces of the cylinder head and the cylinder head block. Here is my old head gasket. Here is my old exhaust uh, manifold gasket. Although this has actually been reused a few times already. Uh, but I have got a new one so I'm going to use that. So this is all nice and clean down here. Unlike a traditional classic mini engine for example, the cylinder head gasket can actually go multiple different ways. But of course only one of them is correct. So I'm taking a moment just to check that I have it the right way round. And uh, no, I still haven't got it. That is looking correct with all the all the holes exposed. Right, so um, and also because this engine um, is using bolts to fit the head on, um, that you can't use as you would on a mini engine, which I keep on referring to because that's what I used to work on, um, where there would be studs coming up. And that means that uh, that would hold the cylinder head gasket in place. Now clearly with bolts there are no studs, so that presumably what these dowels or, or collets or whatever you call these, these things are may hold the, the gasket in place before you put the head on. Anyway, having done that, let's put the head on. <clears throat> and it is fairly heavy. Now this is a problem I didn't expect, how to find the holes. Ah, and there it goes. So, uh, yeah, a 16 valve cylinder head, even though it's alloy and even though the camshafts aren't there, uh, surprisingly heavy. That's that then. The uh, head is now sandwiching the head gasket in position. So I'll just open that and put some cylinder head bolts in. So these are brand new from Burton Power. Ten cylinder head bolts. And as I keep referring to mini engines, where it would be normally be nine, or possibly eleven if it was a racing engine. Ten cylinder head bolts slotted home. And I'm gonna check that there's nothing caught such as on an infamous occasion where I um, trapped a throttle cable. Right, so using my Torx T55, and I've had to use a 3 8 adapter because the holes in the casting aren't quite enough, big enough to let my half inch one in. Let's go with finger tight to start with. Okay, so those are finger tight only, but while I'm here, I'm just going to point out these things, which also have Torx head, heads on them. Uh, they are a lot smaller than the cylinder head bolts. 
um, but they are not cylinder head bolts. These are in fact core plugs, a different type. Um, I hope that they don't need replacing. There's no sign of them leaking at the moment. Um, but they shouldn't be confused with cylinder head bolts. Now there is a sequence <coughs> to uh, tighten these up in three stages in fact. Um, and I'm going to start with the first stage which is 15 um, Newton meters. The next stage is 40 Newton meters. The sequence is going starting at the ends and working towards the middle. Okay, so that's 15 for the first stage, 40 for the second stage, and for the third stage we have to use this, which has been in my stores for a long time as you can tell by the state of the packet. To be honest, it's a 90 degree turn, I probably don't need a protractor to do that. Mm. Well I've never used this thing before. Let's try that. I'm going for a 90 degree turn. So from here, from here to here, in actual fact. <clears throat> well, I think I'd have to say that this thing is completely useless. Especially when you're trying to identify 90 degrees, which to be honest is pretty straightforward to do. So let's go with another turn like that at this end. <clears throat> and having a longer handle on it certainly helps. It's actually quite hard to uh, check whether you've done the last stage which is an extra 90 degrees turn um, because unlike with a torque uh, spanner you can actually go and check if it clicks and so on um, so I had to go and refer back to my recording the video um, to see which one I'd done it got rather confusing you know you double think yourself at least I do did I do that one or did I not do the other one that type of thing um, yeah, so checking the recording was one thing that I did. But another thing I did was I wasn't quite sure, um, I think it was this one, had I talked the last part. I did actually um, check that because I'd got a feel for it in my arm, what the tension, the extra turn actually felt like. So I put a bit of oomph into it and see if it moved without in, without moving it of course but just put a is it moving and it didn't move so from that I judged that uh, it was done up so yeah it would have been better to write it down I suppose that's true that's a hope for the best on that side and I did go around the whole thing just with a with a long um, socket handle just got is it any sign of it moving any of them and no it wasn't so that's it. So yeah, it's not supposed to be a tutorial. It's just supposed to be a recording of what I actually did, which to be honest, I would probably write it down another time. <laughs>